Then it's code in the D to give the keyboard a punch. Whoa. Then cross, correlate, and a break for some lunch. Whoa. Correlate, tabulate, process, and screen. Whoa. Program, print out, regress to the mean. And it's oh boys, can't you code it? Whoa. Program it right. Nothing ever happens in the slide. Welcome back to my State of Video series. We've been looking at post-estimation commands, commands that are used after estimating a regression model. Actually, these commands can be used after just about any estimation routine in Stata, but right now we're looking at, at uh, linear regression models. I've gone ahead and loaded up the general social survey. In particular, we're going to be looking at a dependent variable, which is occupational prestige. This is a value that ranges from 17 to 86. Uh, we'll be using as our major predictor variables number of years of education of the respondent, number of years of father's education, age, and respondent race. I'm going to limit my race to only uh, respondents who are white or black. White is coded 1, black is coded 2. Let's go ahead and run our first regression model. You'll see in line 32 I've set this model up. and. Uh, as I like to do to run these examples, I'll click on the 32 to highlight the line, and then I'll come over here to this button, the Execute Selection button, and just click on it. So there's our first regression results. We have an R squared of over 28, so 28% of the variation in occupational prestige is explained by the combination of these variables. We can see that education is statistically significant, that for each additional year of education, there is an average increase of slightly over two on this uh, occupational prestige scale. Father's occupational prestige is positive as well, but a smaller slope, and it's not statistically significant. Age is also statistically significant, but the coefficient looks to be relatively small. Although it's a little hard to compare directly to education because age is on a scale of 18 to 89, education 0 to 20. If we'd like to see the, uh, we, we could standardize these coefficients using the beta option, which I showed in, the re in one of the regression videos, if we wanted to make a comparison of the coefficients to see which are the most important. Race is statistically significant. Uh, we have a t-statistic of 3. And we can see that adjusting for the other variables, education, father's education, and age, that black respondents on average score about three points lower on the occupational prestige scale. So now we'd like to go ahead and do some post estimation. In particular, we're going to use margins and margins plot. Those two commands go together. Um, the first thing we're going to do is just look at a particular scenario. For example, what if I were to assign everybody in, in my sample to have an education of uh, 10 years, a father's education of 15, and an age of 35? What would the expected value or my marginal effect be? Similarly, what if I were to fix education at 20 years of education, father's education still 15, and the age of the respondent still 35? I can do that directly in the margins command, and we covered this in one other video, so this is really just a little bit of review. Let's go ahead and execute the command in line 35 and look at the output. So you can see at the top of the output there's a there's kind of a table header which tells me what my at options are. Education 10, father's education 15, respondents age 35, followed by education 20, father's education 15, age 35. So I've fixed these values at those uh, I fixed you know the values of these variables at those values and then gone ahead and calculated by marginal effects. We can see that the average occupational prestige in the first scenario is approximately 35 and in the second scenario it's approximately 57. Let's go ahead and look at another example below this. I have a large block of code. First notice that I've taken this whole block of code and enclosed it in a delimit, in a pound delimit semicolon and a pound delimit carriage return block so that I need to use a semicolon now as a as a punctuation mark really a kind of an end of sentence mark for each of my commands I've done this so that all these commands fit on the screen and I don't have to widen my do file editor for you to see everything let's look at the first block the first thing we're going to do with margins is set education at 0 1 2 all the way up to 20 I'm also using the V squish option if I don't use that, that header information at the top of the table, which you'll see in just a second, will be double spaced, or there'll be a blank line in between, and this will make this fit on the screen a little bit better. 
Then I'm going to go ahead and in lines 41 through 43 calculate um, or create a graphic of this relationship. So let's take a look at the margins plot command. Margins plot, I'm going to use the option to recast my plot as a line. The default is a scatter plot. And I'm going to get rid of the confidence intervals and replace them with an area graph. So this will take those bars and fill in kind of a shaded area. I'm adding a title that this is going to be Respondents Education. And then I'm going to give this title, uh, this graph, a name. I'm going to call it Margins 2. And I'll use a Replace Sub option in case it already exists. Now the thing to note here at, with the Add option is I'm specifying the Respondents Education level. Let's go ahead and look at the next block of uh, line, next block of code from lines 46 through 49. This is almost a complete duplicate. In fact, to create this, I copied those lines above and pasted them. The difference here in, with my add option is that instead of making this dependent upon the respondent's education, I'm using the father's education with the variable name PAEDUC. My margin plot is going to be the same. I'll recast this as a line, and I'll make those the uh, the uh, confidence intervals to be an area plot. I've changed the title so we know that it's father's education and give it the, na give it the name margins 3. And below that in line 51 I'm going to combine these two uh, graphs into a single graph so I can side by side compare the effect of father's education with respondent education. I'm going to go highlight this whole block of uh, code and execute it all at one time. Now you can see when I move these graphs around that underneath I've got my two individual graphs but the one I'm really interested in is this combined graph. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. This is a pretty nice graph and it really does show dramatically the relationship between father's education and respondent's occupational prestige, which while positive is negligible, and the relationship between the respondent's education and their occupational prestige, which is not only statistically significant but looks to be substantively important. So this is an example of the power of the margins and margins plot command, and here I'm making a direct comparison of these two regression coefficients and their marginal effects. Let's close this down and look at another example. In line 57 of my program, I'm going to, I'm going to run another um, regression model. And um, it's very similar, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to regress uh, it, uh, occupational prestige on education, father's education, age, and I'm adding the race variable here and it's i dot race so this is going to create a dummy variable I know that one is white and two is black and so for state of purposes by default zero will be the omitted category uh, say one will be the omitted category that's the white group and black will be the uh, included category and then I'm using an if modifier to make certain that I'm only using white and black respondents my margins command now is a little bit different than before. Every, up until now for margins we've always used the add option. Now if you'll notice right after margins I have the name, a uh, variable name race. So in this situation right after margins if you have any factor variables in your model, categorical, dummy variables, even if they're multiple category, not here that's a discrete dichotomous variable, even if you have a lot of different categories, you can specify that right after the margins command and that will make two set of estimates one for the excluded white group and one for the included black group and then I'm going to go ahead and use the at option as well to calculate for the white group fixing a, um, education at zero at one at two and so forth and then doing the same thing for the black group and then finally I'm going to plot the same I'm going to use margins plot and uh, to, to visualize this relationship now one of the things I'm doing here, um, because I've already looked at this graphic, the two regression lines, the one for the white group and the black group, are very similar. They're not very different from each other. And we know from the computer output they're really, they're about three units of occupational prestige separate from each other. That is the coefficient was approximately minus 0.3. If I have a confidence interval as an area, it'll occlude, one, one will cover or occlude the other. So I'm just going to use the no CI option and just make certain I don't get any confidence intervals at all. Let's go ahead and run this 
block of code. So there's my visualization of a dummy variable with no interaction term looking at the qualitative difference comparing black and white. Now in the next block of code starting in line 62 through 64 I'm going to have the same dummy variable in my model but I'm going to interact it with a quantitative variable. I'm going to interact it with my education variable. So the question we're asking here is we know that education has a positive and statistically significant effect on occupation. We know that race has a statistically significant effect on occupation. But does the process by which education confer occupational prestige differ for white and black? In that model above, without an interaction term, I've allowed the intercepts to differ, but I've not allowed the slopes to differ. The interaction term will allow both the intercept and the slopes to differ. Notice how I've specified my interaction term using stata factor notation, factor variable notation. C dot edu c pound pound i dot race. C for continuous variable dot edu c, there's my quantitative measure, number of years of education, interacted with a dummy variable for race. Let's go ahead and run this regression and visualization. And I'm going to focus more on the visualization and the regression results and put these side by side. And here you can see that um, I've gotten the result I sort of anticipated, that we see a slight and subtle difference in how occupational prestige works for the white and black group. Again, the issue here or the point of this video is how great um, margins and margins plot is for being able to interpret these, these regression coefficients. Sure, you can stare at the output and figure out the numbers, and I definitely encourage you to do that, but the visualization is a real quick way to get an idea of what's going on with your data. One last thing I want to show you with these interactions. You can do multiple interactions. It's very difficult in class to be able to describe or teach how to look at a three-way interaction, and the truth is they're very complicated to understand. But if we look at the line of code, lines of code from lines 67 through 69, you'll see now I've specified a quadratic interaction, education interacted with itself, also interacted with the race variable. So first I'm allowing the uh, regression line to change slope over the range of my years of education. And two, I'm going to calculate two separate estimates of regression lines, one for the white group and one for the black group. Let's go ahead and see what that looks like. And that's not too bad. Again, we're seeing that there's a very small gap in occupational prestige for race for people with very little education, you know, say two to eight years of education, that the gap increases as number of years increases, and that the relationship is nonlinear. Last little bit of code to look at. We've treated education as if it's a continuous variable. It's certainly possible to treat it as a factor variable, that is to create a dummy variable for zero years of education, for one year of education, for two years of education, and so forth. And then instead of looking at a continuous change or a monotonic change over education, we'd be looking at discrete changes between zero and one, one and two, and three and four. The next set of code from line 72 to 75 does that. So first of all, I'm going to estimate my regression model. And the difference in this model and the other ones is that I'm using the factor notation for the education variables. So you see that I have it listed as i.educ. That will create a dummy variable for every different category of education. And it will exclude the lowest value, which in my case happens to be 0. I'm now going to execute the margins command. I'm not using an at option because I've specified education as a factor variable. I can just say margins, EDUC, and then I'm going to create a margins plot and give it the name qualitative. Also notice that I'm not using any confidence intervals here. From line 75 to 78, I'm going to specify a different model. Here I've listed education in my model, but now you can see that it's a continuous measure. It's not i.educ. The default for stata is to say, well, this is a continuous measure. My margins command now uses the at option and says, let's go ahead and calculate a marginal effect when education equals 0 and 1, 2, 3, up to 20. 
Let's make a margins plot of that with no confidence intervals and call it quantitative. The last thing I'm going to do here is put these, combine them into one single graphic. Now you'll notice on my margins plot there's a new option there called no draw. So what's going to happen is that Stata will create this graphic but not display it. Because I really don't care about, this is just an intermediate step, I want to see that combined graph where I can look at these two things side by side. In the graph combined, I'm using an option called Y common to be certain that the Y axis is scaled the same in both of these graphics. Let's go ahead and run this block of code and see what we get. So that's not too bad. Uh, on the left, you can see what would look like almost like a by year plot of the means. And that's actually what it is, except that these are adjusted means. They're adjusted for the other variables in the model, which are being held at the average value of them. And then on the right, we're, looking, we're treating education as a continuous variable and seeing the linear change in um, occupational prestige for each additional year of education. So left side is discrete change by year right side is linear change. One last thing to notice here in the graphic down on that x-axis, on the left hand side notice it goes from 0 to 2. That's because in my sample, I, while I had some people who had no years of education and some with two years of education, there wasn't anybody that had a single year of education. On the right hand side you can see that that series is completed because these are just predicted values. It just says well let's assume everybody has one year of education and let's get a predicted value. And let's assume that everybody has zero years of education and two years of education and get predicted values. I hope that this video has helped you understand some of the power of margins. There's still a lot more to learn about margins and we're making good progress. But push on to the other videos until you become an expert at what's going on with this. And as usual, if you have any questions, feel free to give me a call or contact me and I'll do my best to answer your questions. Let it's code in the day to give the keyboard a punch. Wow. Then draw, scorrelate, and a break for some lunch. Wow. Correlate, tabulate, process, and screen. Wow. Program, print out, regress to the mean. And it's old oh, boys, can't you code it? Program it right. Nothing ever happened.